to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. One day in my life, fridge fell on my head. The devil wanted to destroy my life. Yet, by the mercy of God, I've shared with you some of don't think I'm playing games. That's why, if listen, when the devil was doing that, he saw the word I'm giving you. It, it's not just because of Joshua Selman. When they looked at the womb of her that was with child, they said they saw two nations, not two people. There are some of you, the, the arsenals of hell rising against you doesn't even have anything to do with you as in you. is what you represent. Backslide and see how the devil just leaves you. And upon this rock, I will build my church. If you travel up and down and come back safe, it's not luck. There is a law of life. If you don't know it, you will keep being afraid for the rest of your life. Tomorrow we are going to Ogbomosho. Praise the Lord. To go and invade and set fire. It's fire all the way, brothers and sisters. Mm. So break every chain. Break every chain. May your appearance be the threat of hell in any territory. That when you show up, come on, man, the katalabakaya. Look, there are some of you. The reason why God will insist that you marry somebody is because He's taking Himself to that family. He packaged Himself to you and He's saying, Go there. And you enter that family and you just discern the spiritual atmosphere and see chains that have kept people and say, For introduction, welcome note. Zekete katataba manta pratosketa emprotoskete kelepata zekete lekotopa lift up your heads all ye gates that's introduction but why has your life not passed this kind of threat to the gates of hell hallelujah Moses threatened the devil when he died Satan took his body his dead body they were fighting over his dead body Satan said he's dead I still want it because if he resurrects I, I rather carry it and keep it and make sure nothing happens the dead body of a man Elisha died and his dead body still brought somebody back to life But the beautiful part is that Luke 10 19 he said behold see I have given you whether you know how to access it or not is not the issue but I have given you he said behold when the Bible tells you behold it means see conceive what I'm saying as a reality in your spirit it's not just open your eyes and see you are already see you are not blind behold man takata yabada I give you I give I confer upon you power to tread upon serpents scorpions and over how many all the powers of the enemy the word power there is the word exousia authority i give it to you joshua selman because you will need it you will never be able to advance koinonia without that power there are gates that will rise there are gates over Zaria. don't think this crowd gathering outside is just because satan was asleep there is a force we know where we do it when the prayer band comes together on tuesday as they lift their voice something is happening and while you are there in your room some chains just break 
and you say let me go for koinonia today and something wants to keep you but God will say come 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 listen please let me submit to you in all sincerity if your prayer life is dead use this meeting to jack it back to life I'm not playing games this is not an issue of I'm called into the ministry of prayer nobody is called into any ministry of prayer I say everybody is called into the ministry that will make Jesus come the advancement of the kingdom he didn't tell some let me teach you how to pray the rest go fishing he was talking to everybody you see the importance of prayer if you are not told this let me tell you what I'm doing to you is imparting the spirit of prayer and supplication if I don't give you a reason to pray you will never pray all these lazy things people do around and let me tell you something a big secret see explore the mystery of night prayers we'll, we'll soon do when there is a series on that the mystery of night prayers when all the noise and all the things that, that stop unnecessary angelic activities because of disobedience those people are asleep and you are praying you are just worshiping putting worship like this that's why it's good to be rich create a prayer garden in your house put flowers put the portrait of jesus remove every nonsense that nigeria has put in your head and you put it and you wake up in the night you carry your notebook where you are trusting god for direction for the next level you carry your bible you carry your recorder this is what i do this is what i do i put heavy worship for hours and while that is happening i'm lying down flat with notebooks oh lord this land is opening up god said don't go anywhere stay in one place say thank you jesus for saving me i would have made a fool out of myself and God says, I want to do more, son. You are limiting me. You are limiting me. Expand your capacity. Thank God for what you have seen in Koinonia, but it's only little. And I say, Lord, supply the grace. And that heavy Shekinah comes. Shekatatata. I lie down there. I sleep and I wake up. I sleep and I wake up. The body is tired. I say, sleep there. You are not going anywhere. Not what you do on your bed. You lie down and then you put the earphone and you sleep off. That is, is a basic level of spiritual growth. It's spiritual growth that is a reflection of laziness. You don't write your exams on your bed and say, bring my exam paper. No matter what the rain is, you get up. Please, are you getting blessed? I'm trying to impart some level of seriousness in us. Because this is how the great will reign. The gates of hell. Everybody say, I have authority. When I read this scripture years ago, it made me afraid. There are two words in this whole thing that makes me fear God. Not behold, not power, not all. By any means or any means. What does by any means mean to you? Is the part of scripture you understand that will open up. When the Bible says nothing shall by any means. It's a double confirmation so in case anything happens and i didn't pray satan will still not use it as a yardstick because the revelation of by any means is at work in my life by any means whether by means of my ignorance or carelessness that scripture still fortifies me while god is trying to restore me are you getting what i'm saying if you only believe in the power that's what you see if you believe the by any means part that's why some of you were almost sleeping with one lady one day. You two, you don't know what happened. Right? Never brought light or something. That's the power of God working. Don't, don't just laugh. Come on. You know I will talk to you. Right? Or you were planning to go somewhere and rain fell without cloud by any means. Keeping you. I want you to realize that you truly have authority now whether you have received it is one thing for me to give you this it's another thing for you to receive it and it is yet another thing to know how to use it are you getting me whether or not you refuse it it does not mean i did not give you he said i give you authority 
Let's hurry up. The second limitation that the Bible lets us see. Is the limitation that is caused by lack of a transformed and an aligned mind. I want to dwell on this a little and then we'll pray. The first limitation is the gates of hell, Satan. But the second and even bigger limitation is lack of a transformed mind. The absence of a transformed mind can be a limitation to the might and the glory of God finding expression. Now, let me explain something very quickly. I want to just correct something very, very quickly. Please look up. I taught something and we're having a school of ministry and I did a little teaching and I saw the way the students, the thing was just nailing them and uh, God, they were saying, it's not like I don't agree with you, but let it just settle down. What we call the tripartite nature of man. I want to teach you something. Please look up. People have written books who have never had any encounter with God and have written all kinds of audacious books. Let me have three people. I want to correct something now, please. Hallelujah. Watch this. Just stand face. You stand in the middle. You are wearing white. God bless you. Watch this. Look at this. This is what you have been taught. Now, I'm not against what we call the tripartite nature of man. But I want to teach you something that will really liberate you. Otherwise, you will not understand this transformation thing I'm talking about. What I'm going to teach is very powerful now. This is what we have taught people. This is man number one, spirit. This is man, same man number two, soul. Is that not true? This is man number three, body. This is what you have taught. The Bible never teaches this one. This is nonsense. That's religion that brought up that. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It is true that man is a tripartite being. But the concept of tripartite being is not three distinct individuals like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. It's in the similitude of that. But watch this. This is the part I want to explain to you. What is the soul of man? Look up. If you don't understand this, forget transformation. Forget carrying the power of God and the glory of God. What exactly is the soul of man? It is true that the Bible says that you'll be kept spirit, soul, and body. Right? But what is the soul of man? Is What I'm saying is, can you separate the spirit of man to say, this is spirit. You, this is soul. Stand here. This is body. Can that happen? Look at me. When a man dies... How many objects or entities are separate? Two. Is that not true? Whatever you call it, whether spirit or soul, we're about to find out. But whatever, let's call it X. X comes out and the body is lying down there. Correct? Is that true? We're about to get the name of X now. Listen. <laughs> you say why? No one say why. There's no why in the equation. Are you, are you following what I'm saying now? If you don't understand this, you will be confused. Which part relates to God? Which part should change? Which part goes to heaven? And there is, that's to tell you believers are not even growing. Because if you are growing, you must meet this question on the way. Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the soul? Look up. We teach that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Very correct. It's only that we don't think over what we are saying. Joshua Selman. Listen. Joshua Selman is a person. He has a handkerchief. He lives in a room. How many? Assuming this room is a living thing. How many living things do we have? Are you getting what I'm saying now? What you call the soul. Please get this. Never forget what I'm about to teach you now. What you call the soul. Listen. Listen is the spirit of man but connected to his will emotions and intellect the will emotion and, and intellect of man are forces or spiritual frameworks that were attached to his spirit man to be able to help that spirit relate with the body are you getting what i'm saying so when the bible says man is a spirit it is true in that he's describing the fact that this spirit entity came from God right but the spirit like that 
if the spirit just comes to the body there will still not be interaction because of law of territory go and get my message mysteries of the kingdom i've taught on the law of territory that there must be compatibility in territories that's why spirits cannot move freely in the earth they need material bodies is that true because of the law of territory so the spirit as it were is unable to find expression physical in the body until a dividing line are you getting what i'm saying now an attachment that helps the spirit to communicate with this container called the body and that attachment is the mind composed of your will ability to make decisions so the spirit wills and through the will of man the body executes that will are you getting what i'm saying emotions and then intellect a sense of comprehension so this body can wake up as an intelligent person with a brain remove the will emotion and the intellect and you don't have a soul again you just have spirit and body are you getting what i'm saying so when you say man is a soul you are right when you say man is a spirit you are right but i'm telling you the dynamics of the difference because when you get born again this guy watch this when you get born again in in his original sense your spirit man is united with christ it experiences the fullness of salvation immediately immediately oneness so way are you getting my point the so way life implanted here but that so way life has not found expression in this body that so way life has not permeated these faculties that was given to you that is why although you are born again you find out that you may still have that appetite to smoke the memory of what you did is still there because this dividing line the will emotion and intellect has not been transformed are you getting what i'm saying so the bible puts it this way first peter chapter 1 verse 9 first peter chapter 1 verse 9 you need to understand this herbalists understand this those who do astral travel right what they call them harry christian or all this world really they understand this very well it's part of the foundational teachings that they are taught everybody read want to read the word end there is the culmination of your faith receiving the culmination of your faith what is it this is talking to believers what is the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul is when your will your emotions and your intellect progressively begin to experience the fullness of the reality of what has happened in your spirit the degree to which that salvation happens is the degree to which your body begins to respond more perfectly to the impulses of the spirit which is connected with god are you understanding what i'm saying so watch this all authority has been given so we believe the word of god that means this spirit man is carrying the very authority of jesus that means that if the mind of christ is automatically attached to your spirit experientially nothing will be impossible for you again because there is no resistance as far as your soul realm is concerned are you getting what i'm saying are we following what i'm saying but this is usually the problem watch this all power is here the body is a puppet is ready to execute anything that these channels give it room to are you getting what i'm saying now this is all the power of god but this is the level of access so that power can barely find expression to the body so all that the body executes are you getting what i'm saying is just a little and a fraction of the capacity of what is resident there but because human beings look at the body and so promise now teaches because he used his eyes to read oh sick bodies you can be healed blind you will be healed and your spirit man is saying yes we have the power don't fear but because you do not have that vision of your soul the transformation what makes the earthly heavenly are you getting my message now that very factor i now come to him on wheelchair is it true that all authority has been given yes 
and I say stand up and he can't stand up he sits back down I say look ginger your feet let's try it again watch this stand up and nothing happens and at the end of it this guy says your Jesus is a liar what happened he was misrepresented you just misrepresented Jesus Christ because what you read and what happened conflicted themselves do you agree with me now I am telling you that God is in his throne at the mercy of your transformation as mighty as he is on the throne he is at the mercy give me space and then while you are struggling a man like Benny Hinn comes and he just stands and says holy if you are on a wheelchair stand up stand up and he stands up and he's walking what happened more Jesus than you no no there is a greater conformity to the image of the Christ that has made him his body now responds in greater measure are you getting what I'm saying so it is this middle man that is your next project the moment you get born again your job is to bring that mind that contains your will emotion and intellect that makes your spirit called a soul right so when we say salvation of the soul you're not really doing anything per se although we generally say spirit man are you getting my point but what we really mean i'm breaking the dynamics for you is that attachment to your spirit man called your will emotion and intellect that is the doorway through which the reality and the glory of god find expression because he that is joined to christ is one spirit your spirit man has been joined to christ except you don't believe the bible but that christ cannot show up on the scene because your mind is a limitation so i come as a preacher and i say in the name of jesus darkness flee and although the spirit is willing but the flesh becomes weak because the doorway through which the possibilities of God through the spirit will find expression in the body is also weak so I look at somebody oppressed and I say in the name of Jesus Christ be free and nothing happens when nothing happens over a long time the devil now comes and says why don't you try me you have tried the rest Jesus being part of the rest and you say truly let's go to the village we have tried man of God I appreciate you I know God is using you mightily but the emergency requires another force to come into attention and the herbalist that you meet has mastered the art of yielding his faculties see this is the same thing that happens when demons come watch this watch this watch this watch this let me teach you something now watch this a man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the Holy Spirit seeks to attach himself that's called demon possession are you getting me the will is helplessly at the mercy of that so the man can carry out anything this man can be born again demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se but they use the doorways of these faculties so between the spirit and the body there is an interruption are you getting what I'm saying now? So he can be born again, yet anger is still killing him. He can be a man of God, yet he's still masturbating. And he's praying in tongues. Genuine tongues, real tongues. And you are saying, Kai, this man of God is fake. No, he's not fake. Something is happening in the soul realm. The salvation of his soul has not been perfected. So the Bible says it this way. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh but mighty through god are you seeing now he shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds casting every imagination every high thing that dwells in that soul realm and bringing every thought to the obedience of christ listen so the difference between me and many of us is not necessarily more anointing as we call it the difference is more alignment more yieldedness more translation so it makes you reflect the heavenly this is what happened to enoch enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime this his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality 
You see the concept of immortality that many preachers, people like Kobus, great man I love and honor, he's gone to be with the Lord. He caught the revelation of immortality, but not the dynamics of its manifestation. So he knew from the word of God that if immortality is at work in your life, the first thing that happens is you stop aging. At once, you stop aging. That's a sign that immortality is at work. But it so happens that immortality is not an impartation. The fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body. And our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation. So God just takes your spirit and your body lies. The moment the trumpet shows up, the law of immortality is what will make your body. That's the law of resurrection. That's what makes a seed to arise again. Are we getting blessed? Bless you guys. I just hope you understood what I said. Psalm 78 verse 41. Please let's rush. Help us Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Yeah, they turned back and tempted God. And what else did they do? They what? They limited the Holy One. Who are the day? Mortal men. God wanted to step in. Oh, Israel, I want to do mighty things in your midst. But the Bible says they limited God. They limited God. A man can limit God. Brothers and sisters, how many times have we limited God in our lives? How many times have we limited God in our finances? How many times have we limited God in our ministries? Who told you the dead cannot rise? Who told you all these things cannot happen? There is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man. And so every time we engage, I'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation. Listen, I will never forget the first day that I was going to experience the anointing of the Spirit in my life. I've never seen it before, never laid hands on anybody. I just kept praying and doing all the things that I knew to do. And one day, there was a lady who came from somewhere and I prayed, you know, we bought food for her and then she, I prayed for her, she got born again and I was about to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit just by faith and I just laid my hands and it was as if I was dreaming I just saw somebody moving back I had barely touched her and that's how she just went on the floor ah! I said oh God what, what is this good news that I'm seeing so be excited when you begin to see it. don't just be childish about it that's, because some of you once you see that you keep looking for people who's <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small so that the anointing will enter fast you now go and look for small small ladies and try to throw them I remember years ago there was a gentleman okay the power of God will touch you now now and the lady is just doing like this but refusing to fall then you put one finger you not fall two fingers you are doing madness the agenda of God is bigger than that thing God will just let you because at least you are cooperating with him so just do and let's continue but it doesn't mean God, you are slowing down your progress. <laughs> Some of you are doing it, Abby. Praise the Lord. And so from that time, I began to see, I will never forget when I saw one dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think it was our first crusade, Panchin crusade. We usually have pastor's conference where we have some time with the pastors, teach them. That was in 2006. And then we have like, um, we just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them. So I was in a church and I gave a word of knowledge. When I gave a word of knowledge, the person literally stood up by the anointing. You know this running that people run out and come. Brrr, I was shocked. I thought that's how they do it in the church. I called another person and he ran out. I could not understand. I didn't know that gradually, 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 hallelujah. Let me use medical terms. Have you seen times when medical people, a woman wants to give birth, right? And they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough. Is that true? Is there a baby? Yes. Does he want to come out? 
Yes. Why is he not coming out? The mother. Right? And sometimes they have to do all kinds of things. Worse come to worse when nothing is wrong. They just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out. Pray that God will not have to do CS for you for this destiny thing to come out by force. As soon as Zion travails, the Bible uses that simile too. She will put forth a child. So, the reason why God is able to do what he's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the Spirit over the years, we have been able to open a little more. So, the transformation that has, our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the Word of God. So, more of heaven can find expression to our lives. But compared to where God wants to take, we are still so slow. This is why we must continue contending. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is the reason why we celebrate men of God. We don't just celebrate the men. We celebrate their sacrifice of giving God space to find expression. That's why a man can enter a city and that city will shake. Not just shake in terms of crowd. A lot of even people who will not come for the crusade. There's a woman. I think one of the few women on earth that I know is alive. That carries the presence of God in the order of Ketu. She's still alive till today. When that woman is coming for a crusade, immediately they spot her car. That's how healings and deliverance happen. I was shocked. I didn't know there's such a person in the earth. Ah! The day I saw that, I said, my goodness. Ah, this is heaven. This is what we're saying. This woman stepped into the crusade ground. And my goodness, the kind of miracles. I'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not. You are just afraid of the pastor. So you say yes. Provable miracle. Wounds that will close right away. Not magic. Right away. Wounds closing. I said, my goodness, oh God. So you still have men and women. And ladies, do you know you have an advantage over men? Because of your configuration. Your configuration was designed in the similitude of the Holy Spirit. You see that? That's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized. Because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Let's write a few things. A transformed mind. I'm defining it now. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. I'm defining it now. It is the mind that has come into agreement. It is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come out. And has willfully submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's a transformed mind. So a will, emotion and intellect that has come into agreement. You no longer conflict the principles of God. An alignment and a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible calls the end of your faith. The culmination of the work of salvation. And this very one, transformation is not initial. It's not automatic. It's not at once. It's progressive. It takes a while. It is over that that the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, walk out your salvation. You see it now. That's the part it says, walk out. Not just the work of the law. Not just trying to add something to what Jesus has done. No. Work it out. The work out there. It says. Wherefore my beloved. As ye have always obeyed. Not in my presence only. But now much more in my absence. Come out. Work out your what? Your own salvation. As a matter of urgency. What is the work there? Is the name given to your participation. Your cooperation with the Holy Spirit. In your fasting. You are working it out. I'll be sharing with us in your prayer and all the points I'm about to give you here. You are working it out.
Romans chapter 13 verse 14. The Bible gives it an interesting picture. It says put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Where it is like a cloth. Put on. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what? By so doing. Make no provision for the flesh. That means there will be space for the flesh. Until you put on. That put on. The transformation is like wearing a new garment. Your possibilities in life through God is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of God. Hallelujah. You see why we love and honor the Holy Spirit. Write this very quickly. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of God in and through his life that means your degree of alignment to God is the exact measure of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life not how much you carry but how much will find expression so you can carry God as we all believe but you never see that God show up in your life in my life Lord, be glorified. Will you be glorified in my life? Lord, be glorified today. Can you sing that song? Lord, in my life, he my life be glorified be glorified in my life be glorified hallelujah so what is your own part of the deal as far as your, your transformation is concerned? Remember the purpose of your transformation is to give God space in the earth through your life. That God will find expression through you. That God will find expression through your church, man of God. There is so much God can do with that ministry. Woman of God, there is so much God can do in you. But your disalignment has made him look small. I have made you too small in my mind. Ah, how true. Oh Lord, we really should cry for forgiveness. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie. That you are unable to help me. But today, right in this place. But now, oh Lord. I see my wrong Heal my heart And show yourself strong Show yourself in my life And in my heart And with my song Oh Lord Be my Oh that's the song you must sing That's the song of transformation Be magnified Break the walls Break the boundaries Be magnified Oh Lord Be magnified Oh Lord You are highly exalted And there is nothing You can Hey, oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. 
St. Patrick, a great man that lived, a man had died, brothers and sisters. Six months he was dead. And St. Patrick came and said, Where is the grave? True story. When they showed the grave, he signed his signature on it. St. Patrick. He said, Dig it. They brought the man out alive. In this earth, men whose mindsets have authorized heaven to make them gods. I shared with you about ancient, I study a lot about revivals. I was sharing with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway. There was no money to buy another one. He held it and drew it and completed it. Hi. Transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly. Catherine Kuhlman, she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating. She didn't realize she had left the stage. Apostle Babalola, for those of you who know, the founder of CAC, that man preached to a point he was levitating and going. They held him and brought him back. E.W. Kenyon, men who allowed the possibilities of God. You don't die less than 70 in his church. He will raise you back to life. One time a man had a, a, an accident. A car climbed his legs, broke his bones. And all E.W. Kenyon did was to look at him. Because he sees through his eyes. And he looked at him, allowing heaven to pass through your eyes. And the bones started making noise. We say it today like mystics. But men, the Bible says men whom the earth is not worthy of. How did they live? imagine brothers and sisters elijah he was talking with god on the mountain and they came to interrupt him he called fire your atmosphere opened fire we came consumed them and they went back physically daniel entered the lion's den and looked at the lions and smiled joshua told the son to stand still there is something we are missing in our generation and Bill Johnson got it on the spot. He called it the supernatural power of a transformed mind. How that heaven wants to find expression. Do you know how much God can do with koinonia? But in my little mind, imagine how much I limit him. And God says, well, I will just manage with the little space. And see the little things that trickles of his presence that happen during miracle service. And some of you are clapping and God is saying, I wish... I wish that's the reason why God transports men from region to region he's transporting himself through them tomorrow we are going to a bomber shop and God is going there through the decree we have given him he expects to do great things but he wants to do more unfortunately Joshua Selman has refused to be as yielded as God wants so probably there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die but I may not be able to raise him and I will go there and when they finish, people will come with seeds and offering and say, you are a powerful man. And then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity because there is no passion to press again. Don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation. You'll be a weak Christian. Compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth. They threw Paul, took him out of the city and killed him. When they killed him, they went. The other apostles came. Yeah, Paul, this is how you have done. Just shook himself. He said, guys, please, I will talk to you later on. Paul said, I am in the straight between. I'm standing. The line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. That's where I am. I'm choosing to go or to stay. But I will stay because it's profitable for you. Can you imagine a man like that? John. His mind was so aligned. They threw him in boiling pot. And nothing happened. But today when they shoot you, you will die at once. Let me finish up so we'll pray. So what then is your assignment? What's your challenge? Write these two scriptures. Philippians 2.12 and Philippians 2.5. That's your assignment. Let this mind be in you 
permit this mind 2 verse 5 let this mind koinonia God wants to find expression in Zaria God wants to find expression in your family give him space don't limit the mighty one he is mighty but limited mighty but limited mighty but limited through you what is your challenge write it that means your assignment and your task to work out that salvation to contend for transformation and alignment so as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth that's your singular challenge that's your singular task contend for transformation give God space through your life my goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression through me that there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously i look forward to a time when there will be accidents and i will just come and god will say thank you i've always wanted to raise them but i need an access point joshua selman be there hey see the bible says you shall lay hands on the sick it didn't say you shall say be healed just take me near that person and he will be healed god wants to go to your home but he wants to travel through you transformation the hallmark of transformation is oneness with god unity the hallmark of transformation is where your mind literally becomes the mind of christ your mind becomes a full expression becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of god are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of christ are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of christ give him space give him space very quickly before we pray the process of transformation what is the dynamics so how are you changed what's what what does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly number one the first key to transformation is a life of prayer the first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly praying in the spirit when you pray in the spirit that transformation is happening whether you know it or not that's why i encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak join the prayer department for one month so that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life pray in the night pray in the day separate days for prayers prayer in the spirit is one of god's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly is one of the system through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself prayer is like molting the way reptiles snakes molt you, see, you know what happens when they want to expand right they come out of their current shell it's a difficult process it's a sacrifice because snakes don't have hands and they have to crawl through and when they come out you now see the cocoon and the snake is big before it now crystallizes that's how you grow so while you are praying investments of prayer one hour two hours three hours sometimes you just dedicate the time morning till night worship and you just pray with fastings of course periodically not every time and something is happening to you all of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more you wouldn't know until you go for one meeting and while you are standing you are seeing people shouting everywhere and you are seeing the power of God moving and you are surprised what has happened to me space 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 you've given him space prayer is principally a channel for encounter illumination 
and empowerment not just petition petition is the last aspect of prayer the primary purpose of prayer is for encounters for illumination first corinthians let me give you a few scriptures quickly first corinthians chapter 14 i won't explain just write it chapter 2 verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god right he speaks mysteries and then verse 4 first corinthians 14 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies builds up enlarges his spiritual capacity number two romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27 the bible says for we know not what to pray for as we ought to it says but the spirit he makes intercession for us he searches the mind of god right he brings an intermingling it's like a salt covenant he says let us reason together it happens in the place of prayer romans 8 26 and 27 and then jeremiah 33 verse 3 prayer grants you access to light and illumination call on to me and i will answer and show the great and mighty things not small and meager things great and mighty things let me tell you look at me there is no amount of bible study that will substitute for prayer do you know why many people are not really getting revelation because what we are doing is study alone and not prayer you can study but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a shell and release the life to you make no mistakes about it you can sit down study forever get up and carry the letter that kills go and teach and not bless people but true illumination is in the place of prayer and when you add prayer with fasting it's like a time bomb he said then shall your light break forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily is this not the fast that i've commanded that means there is a type you can do on your own hunger strike right religious fast but there is a type i have commanded and if you do that your light will break forth like the morning and your health will come speedily james chapter 5 verse 16 the fervent not joking and trivial prayer the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much amplified says is dynamic in its working so when you pray when you pray in the spirit you are enlarging your capacity you see why we pray you see why we believe in the ministry of prayer it's not the works of the Lord to pray and fast we are not trying to add to what Jesus has done we are opening up to receive all that he has brought number two the second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word so here we have the ministry of prayer and then insight and revelation from the word notice I didn't just say the word of God it's for a reason because if I say the word of God many of us have been reading Bible but the insight and the revelation the illumination you get from the word of God and then in addition to that our obedience to the word of God is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us listen listen the word of God is like a bag that carries treasures your obedience to the principles of the word opens up the bags and releases the treasure inside you know how granite is it's in a shell that's principally how the word of God is when you act your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you so it's not enough to just get insight and revelation you must be willing to obey to the latter i wrote something here that is interesting revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion revelation when you have revelation insight in the bible and you do not have the willingness to obey it you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion A few scriptures mm. proverbs 24 verse 30 
let's look at it very quickly we'll look at three scriptures proverbs 24 verse 30 and then acts chapter 8 29 to 30 proverbs 24 verse 30 hallelujah it says 24 verse what 30 i think i may have made a mistake okay let's go to acts 8 verse 29 to 30 while i look that up acts 8 it was a story the story of the utopian enoch watch this that guy could not experience god in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding and when the spirit said unto philip go near and join yourself to the chariot 30 and philip ran peter to him and had him read prophet isaiah and said what understandest what thou readest not just that you are reading it do you understand it's not enough to just know scriptures and cram scriptures do you understand understanding illumination insight job chapter 22 verse 22 very powerfully job 22 22 receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart receive it don't just read it receive it let light enter you the entrance of thy word give it light there is an enlargement he said write prosperously because of truth the last scripture john chapter 1 verse 12 this is the one that blew my mind the bible says as many as received him who is the him the word but as many not everybody will receive the word many will read the word many will admire the word but very few will receive it he said but as many as receives that word that word gives them power to become power to become power to become when you receive the word it gives you power to become what it says not when you read it when you receive it and diligently obey the principles it transforms you to become so the word about titan guarantees your financial future when you receive it you receive it by acting upon it and satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly number three the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship a life of intense worship intense worship bible says do not be drunk with wine wearing in excess he said but be filled with the holy ghost speaking to yourself in psalms hymns spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the lord let me tell you something about worship i've studied it very well worship brings the manifest presence of god to your life and your territory worship is a magnet there are three levels of god's presence there is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere at the same time there is what i call his emmanuel dimension that when two people are gathered in a place he's there in their midst God with us but there is his Shekinah his manifested presence that dimension is invoked in worship second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 let's hurry up second Chronicles 5 12 to 14 second Chronicles 5 it says and also the Levites which were singers all of them of Asaph of Haman of Jedutun with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen having cymbals and pastries and psalms stood at the east end of the altar and with them a hundred and twenty priests worshiping and sounding trumpets next verse and it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord and they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praise the lord saying for the lord is good 
for his mercy endured forever that what happened the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the lord next verse the shekinah of god came and rested there so that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud he said for the glory of the lord had filled the house when you maintain a life of intense worship the glory of god comes your body begins to shake a literal vibration at his presence and you are lying down there soaking in that presence for hours see this is how to walk powerful in the anointing and the glory of God that the cloud the glory of the Lord let me tell you when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life you won't even be able to stand up that Shekinah sicknesses will melt away infirmities will go away the majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you maintain a life of worship put worship songs in your phones remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activities come and meet the worship team let them do a selection of soaking worship songs for you just lie down in your room you may be sleeping normally but let the songs just play sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing no words to them and you are just shocking and after a while the shekinah of god like a hand resting upon eggs remember what i said about the hand a hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek how much more the glory of god when it rests upon you hallelujah acts chapter 16 verse 25 the bible tells us that paul and silas were locked up in the prison and the bible says they prayed and they sang they sang praises to god and the prisoners had them he had them oh my god that's why we worship a lot in koinonia it's the secret of the presence it's a secret look at every man that walks in the anointing every man that walks in the miraculous benny Hinn will worship for hours Dr. Paul Enche would worship for hours. Men who know God, men who carry the anointing, Catherine Kuhlman, all these great people, they would sing hymns and worship for hours. And when the presence rests, wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves. Your job is to get God to the scene and step out. Our worship team, all of them have been trained to understand the assignment of Koinonia worship team is not to entertain Koinonia. The very assignment of Koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of God finds expression. That's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever Alleluia. sing it one more time you are good you are good and your mercy is forever Alleluia. Yeah. you are good Let's sing it one more time. You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. try to listen to my message and voice of his presence is the foundation for this we're going to pray we're out of time rise up on your feet just two prayer points but I want you to pray with all your heart I like you to pray 
and ask the Lord and say Lord bring me to that place where the mind of Christ experientially becomes my mind I'm willing to give you space go ahead and pray I'm willing to give the God of miracles space the God of breakthroughs the God of signs and wonders the God of impartations the God of salvation and revival Pray, man of God. Pray, woman of God. Pray, businessman. Give God space. Hallelujah. Pay yourselves into two, please. You are going to pray. I like you to intercede intensely for your neighbor. Lord, let heaven invade his life. Pray. Let heaven invade his mindset. Let heaven invade his ministry. Let heaven invade his business. Let heaven invade his marriage. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Heaven, heaven, invade our minds, invade our souls, invade our souls, invade our bodies. Let the fullness of the capacity the fullness of the possibilities in God find expression hallelujah hallelujah look up you're going to pray for yourself and say Lord in any way I have misrepresented you by refusing to give you space I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation. That healing anointing must come out in my life. After the order of Benny Hinn, after the order of Catherine Kuman, that prophetic mantle must find expression. I refuse to be a weak Christian. I refuse to be a weak man of God. That apostolic anointing will find expression after the order of Paul. After the order of Smith Wigglesworth, after the order of St. Patrick, my territory will experience revival, revival, fire, 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 revival, fire, healing, fire. No playing games, no playing games with destiny. No playing games. Shake it, 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 it. The sick must be healed through my life. The oppressed must be delivered. Sinners must be saved. Sinners must be saved. The church must be equipped through my life. I give you space. My family must receive breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but just permit me to raise one more prayer point. Look at me. Look at me. There are two limitations to your being transformed. The first, the gates of hell. The solution to that is have an understanding of your authority and exercise it. The second is the limitation that your mind gives in. The solution, content for transformation, 
in prayer and in the word we are going to pray there are forces that are vowed that you will never rise up to give God that level of space there are all kinds of forces but I like you to exercise dominion over yourself and your loved ones you love them some of them don't know what you know lift your voice and cry in the next three minutes please permit me to raise one more prayer point I know we're out of time but this is burning in my spirit look up hallelujah God is doing things fire is burning in this place listen Bishop Oyedeko said there was a time the church in Kaduna was not growing nothing was happening they had the heart they had the mandate but they were spiritual walls and they were fasting together with the pastors lord what is it and the lord told him come out and he came out and he said look and he looked upon the church and he saw a dark cloud he said this is the cloud that is misinterpreting your ministry there are people who are genuine but the perception of others about you and your ministry is either that you are fake or you are controversial there are spirits that make it so so people will not come to receive so people will not come to be blessed there are some of you the helpers of your destiny have been manipulated whenever they want to come to your life something drives them who am i speaking to lift your voice like a priest and challenge gates challenge gates Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Forces of ancestry. Forces of darkness. Lift up your heads. Forces of delay. Lift up your head. Forces of stagnation. Lift up your head. Forces of lukewarmness in the name of Jesus, lift up your hands. Pray, begin to command, decree, command, decree, command, release my marriage, release my job, release my academics, release my destiny, release my ministry. My mantle, release my anointing, release my destiny, help us, release my unction. Shokote, Skata, Mapate, Go Protokete, Ekata, Tata, 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 set fire fire on altars of darkness we set fire on yokes we set fire on devils we command by the fire of the world by the fire of the blood by the fire of the spirit 
That's how you rescue your ministry. That's how you rescue your marriage. That's how those chains will be caught. They won't be caught by joking and playing games. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When you confront the gates, then they will open. When you confront the gates that are killing your ministry, then it will open. When you confront the gates stopping your marriage, then it will open. You confront the gates killing your academics, then it will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to stop. We're out of time. Listen. I want you to take this revelation. God is not limited. We have limited him. And the spirit cries. The spirit cries. If any man will give me space. He said go and borrow vessels. The problem is not the oil. But the container carrying it. If you enlarge the container, the oil will increase. Shut up. Hallelujah. I pray for a restoration of every dead prayer life. Every spiritual lukewarmness that has authorized Satan to make a chicken out of your life. I empower you tonight with strength from above. In the name of Jesus. Every zeal and fire for God that has died for whatever reason. May it jump back to life today. Hallelujah. Now quickly keep standing everybody. Our time is fast spent. But there are people inside and outside the Lord brought you. And you know that you have not made your ways right with the Lord. You love God. But you know you are tired. You are saying man of God I'm tired of the way my life is. And I'm crying for help. You've never given your heart to the Lord. Or you gave your life to Christ. But for some reasons you found yourself moving in one way or the other. Please make your way inside and outside. We have one minute for this. I'd like you to rush out and come before God. Come, this is a place of empowerment. Welcome home. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anybody. I know there are many people outside. Make your way inside. Run to Jesus. The place of empowerment. The encounter that will change your story. Please take God seriously tonight. Don't play games with your destiny. Jesus wants to invade your life. hallelujah keep coming for those who are here listen i salute you and i congratulate you there is no room for lukewarmness in this christian race and let me tell you no matter where you are don't feel guilty you can take off from there god is willing to reach down to you and start with you everybody started from somewhere therefore i want you to lift your right hand dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.